All right, greetings and welcome back everyone to the Matrix Unveiled School of Mysticism. We're just getting started here. Welcome back to the lecture of September. This is gonna be an incredible, incredible lecture and I'm very excited to be here once again with you all today. This is just the intro. We're gonna set the mood, set the tone, listening to some spiritual battle magic and uh, battle music because this is really about the spiritual warfare that's been going on on our planet. So. Today we have quite a lecture for you all. So as we are settling in and getting accustomed to this energy and you know this presentation, I'm gonna give you guys a second to hop into Zoom. And I'm very excited to be here today to talk to you guys about awakening of the dragon currents, advanced mystical guardianship and ley lines of mystical power. So today's lecture is inspired by the dragon mother, the dragon queen, the powers of the earth mother, Sophia. What's missing from our society and our culture and our actual identity is this true gnosis. This true gnosis of understanding what magic is, what true mysticism is, and where you as a divine spark and as a spiritual being actually originate from. Okay. And there's also the whole concept of the ley lines of mystical power, which is literally the webs, the networks, the powerhouses, the streams, the currents of this magical force that runs through all of reality, that runs through all of existence and actually is responsible for creation, destruction, renewal, regeneration, and the cycles of life and the seasons that exist within that. So we have to realize that even though we've been taught in school and we've been taught in society that reality is a materialistic uh, is a materialistic paradigm and um, everything is basically just matter, dumb, illusory matter or dumb, you know, non sentient matter. This is a lie that we've been told and propagated by materialistic scientists, materialistic reductionists who seek to keep these secrets and the gnosis of consciousness away from you because they understand that those people that are aware of consciousness and what the power of consciousness is and what the power of the spirit is are able to break free of the control systems. They're able to break free of the reality of energy harvesting, which is mainly what's taking place in this world. We, we see the energy harvesting matrix, okay? I've also called this the simulatrix, which is the control program, which is designed to use human beings as batteries, as opposed to being infinite creating sparks, infinite creator sparks, whom can basically manifest as they desire with their thoughts, with their intentions, with their magic. Okay. And what I'm here to tell you today is that it is 110% possible to still retain that original power, even within our crazed degrading and degenerative society that we find ourselves in. It's still very much possible to access the ley lines of power and to become an ancient mystical guardian and to tap into this ancient gnosis and to be allied with the dragons, okay? To put it bluntly, to be allied with the forces of nature, to be allied with the divine powers that seek and rule over the archons themselves. The way to really cleanse yourself is to unwire this false programming. And as you unwire this false programming, you become aware that there is false programming installed within the reality itself, within the energetic currents itself, within the spirit itself, within the earth herself. And so this process of cleansing the parasites, which is what the Watiko virus is, which is what the Archon matrix is, is this parasitical force. So as a true shaman, as a true magician or a magi or a sorcerer or, or a wizard or a maze uh, sorry mage um or as a true mystical warrior you learn that sometimes you have to confront the darkness sometimes you have to go in and slay the darkness and destroy it and bring balance to the realm but to bring your world to life you need energy you need awareness of how to direct that energy and you also need to know exactly what to do with that energy and how to create it into the proper spells and then when you get even more advanced you're even going to learn how to protect your own energy and the currents 
that are supplying you this energy. So your mystical energy isn't just coming from nowhere. It's coming from your environment. It's coming from the air you breathe. It's coming from the water that you drink. It's coming from the fire that is all around you within the realm, okay? It's coming from the electricity as well, which is the electromagnetic energy, the, the literal spark, okay? And it's also coming from the earth underneath your feet and the soil that is producing your food. So when you have a very strong connection to the elements and to um, the natural forces of nature, what begins to manifest is your ability to connect to these forces and communicate with them and begin to influence and harmonize and co uh, commingle. Basically, you have a symbiotic relationship. A symbiosis is basically um, a co-beneficial relationship. So one party gives, another party gives. So if you want connection to the ley lines and to the earth mother, you must give first to the earth mother. You must first give to your environment and then mother earth will see this and she will give back to you. What the dark entities do is that they end up just stealing from the earth mother without asking her. They do not ask. They do not uh, request permission. They simply take. And so a dark entity is one that takes life force energy without consent or without agreement or without fair exchange within that life force energy. And this is what they do in order to retain power. So whether they do it through sacrificial magic or whether they do it through harvesting or targeting or whatever else types of methods, as you become more advanced, you learn more about these tactics and how they work and what kinds of nefarious energies are actually out there and what they do. Okay. This is just part of the practice. This is something that you will start to become attuned to and 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 become aware of as you delve deeper. But I want to remind you that the power, the ultimate power belongs to the truth. And it's always in resonance with the truth. And it's simply unable to be permeated by those that are truly the mystical guardians. Now, let's get on to the next slide. Um, one more thing I was going to say about this picture is this is an example of what I would call a ley line. Okay. And we're, we're going to talk exactly what a ley line is and how that operates. But essentially, you can see here that we have like a vortex, an energetic vortex. And this energetic vortex is a culmination of the energies in a singular spot, which is vortexing, spiraling, increasing. And basically, it's a heightened state of the energy. So these vortexes are so important to start to begin to um, identify and vortices are basically places where the currents are much more heightened. And so you will feel a spiraling motion. This is the, this is the motion of the Taurus. So the Taurus will go in a spiral, literally in a spiral upwards and downwards. And this energy is flowing continuously. And through that process, spirits, entities, the guardians, um, different types of intelligences, which we have no understanding of as humans, unless you have a heightened eye and, and perception, um, elementals, and all types of forces are basically able to travel from realm to physical realm, and from physical realm to astral realm, and from astral realm to etheric realm, and from etheric realm to causal and other realms, okay? So they're, basic, they're basically points, they're jump points. The original ley lines, when they were fully activated, they were literally like nexuses to the point where you walked into the nexus, like you walked into the Great Pyramid, okay? You walked into the Great Pyramid right here, and you could just go right into the Stargate, and the Stargate would just zap you, you got shot through a tunnel of light, and you would be in a different spot within 15 seconds to a minute, you know, very short period of time. So they could travel from here to Orion back in, let's say, Orion. And of course, that was used by the Orion gatekeepers or the Archons in certain manners. So there was these portals. There was even portal wars. There was even pyramid wars where there were these nexus and these jump points which had battles, massive magical battles because they were controlling the hyperdimensional technology that's pre-installed. So when you actually have something like this like a sphinx and a pyramid and a, a stone circle, what's happening 
is that the currents that are naturally flowing throughout the reality are so heightened in certain points that are perfectly uh, algorithmically and mathematically precise, then can be accessed by using certain technologies, certain crystals, certain quartz, so um, certain types of crystals, right, can utilize the energy and it can be harnessed and then it can be redistributed and it can also be used to open these vortices. So this kind of technology was far more advanced than what we have in this day and age. This was the true technology, as Leslie just said. And this technology was actually what gave us hyperdimensional capabilities, what gave us the ability to go from planet to planet, from realm to realm, from Asgard to Midgard, from Midgard to Svartalheim, from Svartalheim to Alfheim, from Alfheim to uh, Muspelheim, from Muspelheim to Helheim, and from Helheim to back to Asgard or any other one. Okay. And we'll talk about the specific names in the, in the world tree and how that all breaks down here. There's a place called Shambhala, a divine realm in which beings are granted immortality, eternal life, and extremely slowed perception of time. Old age, disease, and natural deaths are all halted as beings exist in a highly spiritual energetic state and are even able to transcend space, time, death, re rebirth, and reincarnation. So essentially, it's like a realm. It's a place that is in the center. So we would be actually in the, the, the land of Midgard, right? And then within one more ring, which is coming closer into our reality, one more ring is this land of the world tree and where the center point of the axis mundi is so the axis mundi is like the center point and this is why all compasses actually point north because your compass is actually pointing towards something it's not operating off of just like pure fiction no it's being drawn magnetically to the largest most magnetic most powerful center which is the north pole which the north pole is the axis mundi which is where the shambhala is and this is where the center of all of the magic is flowing out from my point is that most of us most likely came from this realm uh the garden of eden also known as shambhala or agartha or um hyperborea okay which was a divine realm which was a realm of godly beings and godly beings were able to live as long as they wanted to and they didn't have any sort of um, like restriction in their consciousness whatsoever. And so the the elven realms, as uh, Lily just said, is they would be in Alfheim and also Vanaheim and also Asgard. So the elves, because there are light elves, right? The light elves live, they have their own realm. Alfheim is the light, is the realm of the light elves. And the light elves are concerned with light magic. So they're very celestial. They also lived in Asgard. They also, which is, another form or another name for Shambhala. Finally, we have the guardian of the magical realms and the protector of the ethereal magic. This is the mage. This is the wise one, the wise shaman, the wise woman, the wise mystic, the one who is dressed in the robes and is attuned to the higher celestial planes. His work or her work is not just in the mundane, but actually in something that has been forgotten. So much so forgotten that it's actually considered fiction. But it's very not fiction. It's very much not fiction. It's very much real. And so to be a guardian, you know, eventually you will feel by the forces that they've anointed you, that they've like, they've given you a crown, they've given you a sword, they've given you a, a spear, they've given you a dagger, they've given you a wand. You go through these like archetypal level ups and you're like, well, I've, I've received all of this now. I must be the guardian. And so then it is the dedication towards that path. That de dedication each and every single day, just because you become the guardian, doesn't mean your work is done. In fact, now your work has begun. So you've never done anything until this point, until you've become the guardian. Now you become to see, can you live up to being the guardian? This is the difficult part. But the rewards are sweet for those that are dedicated and willing to be the protector you must sacrifice your own flaws. You don't have to sacrifice anything else. You have to sacrifice your flaws in your own ego. So you don't sacrifice anything else other than your own shortcomings. That's become very apparent to me in uh, my journey. So anyways, 
Um, we're going to wrap up here. We're basically finished. Um, once again, Battle Magic is now going to be available for pre-registration. So our link will be in the School of Mysticism. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. I'll, I'll just go ahead and pull it up as I have a chance to. So Battle Magic is now available, and I'm very much looking forward to launching that course and really getting it um, you know, out to you all and shared because it's going to be one of my most powerful courses. And this will be more about the ley lines. Now, we will for sure have another uh, lecture on um, the, the ley lines and whatnot and how they work. So Battle Magic, what you want to do is you just want to go to the courses and just go ahead and select uh, Battle Magic. It'll be here. It's as premium. Um, so it's it's in the it's in the course selection. And this is going to be available. This is a new course that I wanted to make you all aware of. So whenever uh, we launch this, it will be announced. But right now we're doing a pre-registration. So it's like those that want to be uh, waiting for the drop of information. There's already a few videos in there. Um, I will warn you, though, that this is a more intense course. So it is like I'm not going to hold back on certain things. So if you find me too extreme or too uncensored, cover your precious ears <laughs> because it's not going to be soft. It's a very uh, fierce course. And so I'm looking forward to dropping it for the school first, and then we'll trickle it out onto YouTube and whatnot because um, this is stuff that's serious and it takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of um, investment on my part. You know, we are, as the School of Mysticism, we invest a lot of energy, time, and resources into finding the best teachings, finding the best um, ways of being, finding the best materials that we need to use, and finding the best techniques to offer you guys the best education. Because I truly believe that if we all were educated in this information, we would have a very different world. And so therefore, when I saw this in my life, I'd made it my mission to really bring the education and the teaching and the knowledge and the resources as best as I could and dedicate myself to this cause. Because I understood that if we just all had a little bit more knowledge and awareness of who we truly were, reality would be much, much better, much more magical, and we would all be happier beings. And we may even get rid of these archons, get rid of the people that have been controlling humanity for so long, we would be free.